during my lifetime because I became a grandmaster and professional player in 1987. I was at that time extremely young, I was not even 20. And at that time, needless to say, nobody had a laptop. Nobody had a databases. People were not corresponding over the internet. Yeah. Nothing like this existed. The main correspondence was through some fax. And so it has changed dramatically. And uh, okay, all the people, including me, they had to adapt through these changes. It is very simple, it is a live or die. Mm -hmm. Either you adapt to the modern changes which is connected to the game, or your concurrents are going to overtake you and you are not going to be able to stay in running anymore. How do you think that development has um, impacted the chess style of play? It has impacted that, let's say, people are getting a younger generation, they are getting more uh, result-oriented, if you wish. So let's put it this way, time when I started, the chess was considered between sports and art. And I like this art element more, because the recent changes have brought more competitiveness into the chess and pushed it closer to the sport part, where actually preparation and all the kind of things related to it play more important role than a flash of inspiration. I like more the first part, when it was closer to the art. But like I said, uh, you have developments of the game, the developments which doesn't use the game. And at some moment, it doesn't really matter what I like. If I want to stay running, I have to adapt to the situation. So speaking of uh, adapting and uh, playing chess, how have you or how do you normally prepare before a game, like before this kind of tournaments? Uh, we have similar preparation, most of us. Most of us, we have uh, computers with the databases, with games of the opponents. With the most recent games and the world tournaments, where you kind of try to find out what colleagues are doing, whether somebody came with some very interesting idea which you would like to follow, and then we analyze, and then before the game, in general, uh, you never know what your opponent will do, but you do analyze his games. And you kind of go to the game with, let's say, A, B, C choices in your mind about how the game may develop. And for these A, B, C choices, you are having some kind of plan how you are going to proceed. Okay, very often happens D, that your opponent does something which you didn't exactly expect, and then you have to solve situation over the board. But you always come to the game with some kind of a game plan, with some kind of idea, well, how do you want to develop uh, your game? What does it take to being on the top and also staying on the top? I guess it takes a couple of elements. Well, the first one is that you must work on your game, what everybody has to do. So you have to follow the latest developments, just like if you want to be a well, good software engineer, you have to follow the latest developments. You cannot exclude yourself from this. You have to preserve your uh, nerve system, so you should be able to stand the tension. This is what often people have a problem, because in the game, at some moment, tension develops. And it is not so easy to preserve this in yourself uh, for 20 or 30 years. And you have to try to stay physically fit, because it helps. Games are taking long, you travel a lot, and it takes, you need some energy in order to be able to conduct your job well. In Obama, I played many times. Even uh, in, uh, I think, 90, yeah, 95, I had the pleasure of winning it. Uh, so now I played many times in Obama. And I love uh, Lila Torque and this beautiful city. It's always in a nice time because weather is beautiful. Fortunately, they always organize it in uh, May or June. They never choose for December and they should keep it that way. Hey, I enjoyed it very much. I was here many times. I think that organizer is very careful. Organizer is always choosing, trying to choose some good balance between. Uh, giving a chance to best Swedish players to actually compare, to try to fight and to compare themselves to international competition and always mm -hmm. inviting uh, three or four international players who have a reputation for playing interesting games. And I think that this, this is the balance which is well preserved during the last 20 years. I think this is 20th tournament or 19th tournament, something like this. Oh, I have many tournaments. I don't even know, you know where to start and things are important, for example, from this tournament. This is an important tournament because it is a traditional tournament. Everybody follows it. But I go from this immediately to French team competition when I will play for a new club. And of course, I want to play well for a new club. Then we have a Dutch national championship. It is always nice to win championship in your country. And then I would play two tournaments in Canada. So actually, no, it is very difficult to single out uh, one single one as being the most important. I just hope that here will develop very well. 
the upcoming World Championships match has uh, got a, a lot of attention this year, yep. and especially for our Scandinavian countries, yep. Magnus Carlsen. Yep. What do you think about that match? I mean, it's an, you never know what's going to happen, but yep. how are your feelings towards that match? I think if Carlsen does manage to control attention, to control his nerves, that he would win. I have no doubts about this. But he has shown in the last number of tournaments uh, psychological weakness of controlling his central attention. Because there were a number of important games in the last few tournaments which he did lose, which I think normally he would not have lost. And all his life he was treated as a prodigy, somebody with extreme talent, which he obviously is, but never had the performance pressure on his back because since he was so young and so talented, people always judge it doesn't matter, he would have time to become a world champion. But okay, this time is now. Now is this match. So now he'll be playing maybe for the first time in his life with the full psychological pressure of all the media world watching at him, watching on every move he makes. Which is not easy when you are so young. So I think if he would be able to control this psychological part of the game, then he would win for sure. And if not, well, then uh, he would have to wait for another opportunity.